Yeah, we got a former champion and boy, never we... So the Sapphire decks with Tamatoa, if you can get that Tamatoa stuck down on the board, you might feel a little bit more safe now. I tell you what, I'm sitting right here next to you, Joe, but if I was just casually walking past you, I hear you say the word Tamatoa, <laughs> my head is gonna snap round. I have made no secret of the fact. I made the claim in Bokka, I'm gonna say it again. There is no one in the room or watching this stream that has heard the song Shiny more times than I have, and I feel very confident saying that as strictly as I I am. Looks like we are in the mulligan phase here, so Julian and Fear Time here both have to make that decision. You can put as many cards as you like back, and that would include your entire hand if you wish, and then you draw back to your full opening hand here of seven cards. Huge decision to be made as to which cards do you keep, because the more cards you keep, if there's something you really want in your opening hand that isn't there, the more cards you keep, the lower your chance of drawing into that card you really, really want. But, you know, if you've got you know, something like Whole New World, for instance, it's rubbish for the first few turns, but it's phenomenal after that. So do you put it back into your deck, hoping you'll draw into it, or do you keep it having a card in your hand for several turns that isn't going to do very much? These are the kind of decisions players have to make every mulligan phase. It's one of my favorite parts of Disney Lorcana. Yeah, and it's worth mentioning in this first game, neither player is aware of the deck that their opponent is playing. Of course, going into the second game, they'll be fully aware because they would have just seen their opponent play it. But right now, you have what I like to call a blind mulligan. You're just mulliganing, not sure what your opponent's playing, but just trying to make either a prediction. Maybe Julian, for example, might expect Theatime Time to be on Ruby Amethyst, considering they won the previous event with that. Or the other approach is you just take a, a safe mulligan. You just look for a a decent curve, like a card to play on turn one, two, and three. Yeah, absolutely. Finding that curve. When we say playing on the curve, what we mean is a good one cost turn one, a good two cost turn two, good three cost turn three. That is playing on curve. So it does look like we have got ourselves some ink coming down. Robin Hood getting inked and turn one Diablo lets you look at your opponent's hand. I love this skill from Diablo because it gives you information. You know what your opponent has got access to for the next couple of turns, including my old crabby friend Tamatoa. Yeah, and Thea Time does have access to Mickey Mouse, which can be played on turn three to add extra ink into the inkwell. No turn two for Thea Time, however. But of course, against Emerald Steel, a big plan is to keep as many cards in hand as possible to deny the opponent discarding your whole hand down. As it turned to, it's a Flynn Rider, it's not a Bucky. You don't see Flynn Rider that often in these decks, Ross. And I've also seen a Jack in Julian's hand as well, which is, again, not really a Floodborne synergy card, but a slightly more aggressive questing card. Yeah, that Flynn Rider, that's the one I mentioned earlier, very aggressive questing. Here is that Mickey Mouse you mentioned yourself here, Spessy, getting that down just so you can get yourself an extra ink going into your inkwell. And now it is a blind card going into your inkwell, which can be a little bit terrifying. Yes. But extra ink for a free cost, always fun to do. And now, I mean, Julian here, you've already got one law from the Diablo. Could start questing quite aggressively from the challenge, you know, from this turn. Oh, and here comes Ursula. And you should know there's a target in there because you Diabloed a turn or two ago. Yep. And the Grab Your Swords is the card Julian gets rid of. I think this is a great play. Otherwise, if Julian just continued to play something else with two cost, uh, two willpower like a Flynn Rider, the Grab Your Swords could have come through for Thea Time on just turn four because of that Mickey Mouse adding extra ink into Thea Time's hand, uh, Inkwell. Instead of a turn five Grab Your Swords, Grab Your Swords could have just come through on turn four and it could have cleared Julian's board. So a really heads up play to take that Ursula Deceiver before the Grab Your Swords then Fear Time could come through. Yeah, love that. We see another card going into the inkwell here. Fear Time building that up nicely. We have a Fortis Fear coming down as well. Another item gets you to draw a card. Questing with Mickey, getting yourself off. Oh, no. I don't think we are questing with Mickey. Was that a challenge into Diablo? Yeah, it looks like it. 
possibly with that Tinkerbell in mind, Ross, just That's getting that I'm one thinking. damage counter, getting ready to clear the board. And these Beast Tragic Heroes are great cards if they have no damage counters. They are going to be able to draw Julian a card per turn. But with the damage counter, that card draw is going to be shut down. And Tinkerbell is great at dealing with Beast in that sense. Of course, though, if Beast isn't drawing a card. It is going to have seven strength, which is a lot. But usually you'd rather have the card draw. We see Jacques come through. This is going to be giving Theatre Times, one of Theatre Times cards, Reckless, which means they must, they can't quest, and they must challenge if able. And I believe Flavisham was the target, so Flavisham won't be able to quest this turn, and it must challenge. However, if the time was, for example, to have a song, they could mitigate the Reckless by singing with Flavisham, but that doesn't look like that is going to be an option for them here. And what you really want to do with Flavisham is quest, and then, you know, banish one of your items, draw some cards. Here comes Tinkerbell! And there was an interesting thing in the previous turn. Julian actually inked the Beast Tragic Hero mm. rather than playing it. It seemed to be a bit of a decision. I think Julian saw exactly what you saw, which is, I reckon there's a Tinkerbell coming down next turn. Beast is not as good if Tinkerbell's going to come down. I would rather ink it and play Jack, for instance, and hurt your Flavisham. So, that might have been a bit of a heads-up play from Julian there, going Beast isn't as good if Tinkerbell's coming down. And, well, Tinkerbell came down. And Julian with four cards in hand, only two inkable cards. So Flynn Rider most likely going to be the card inked here. And then the Beast Tragic Hero could come down. Yeah, I would like that. Because if you've just seen Tinkerbell coming down, the chance of another Tinkerbell next turn is yeah. quite slim. Yeah, definitely. But the Tinkerbell being on the board is a really interesting spot now for Julian because while they need to quest to win the game, they're already at eight law, which is pretty impressive. If they are questing with cards here, the Tinkerbell is going to be able to use its ability to deal two damage to a other character once one is banished in a challenge. And that can be a really good way for Theatre Time to control the board. And now Julian's in this position where they have to decide, do they quest or do they just end up doing nothing at all? And this is the power that Tinkerbell has, not only causing a splash when she hits the board, but also applying pressure when she's on the board. Julian does decide to quest, though, and that's three law. Julian's only nine away, making a really, really quick start to proceedings here. Yeah, and when you see cards like Flynn Rider in the deck, it does make you think this is a build which is going a bit more aggressively in terms of that early game questing. We do see here in Flavisham now questing, getting rid of the Fort of Fear, drawing an extra two cards, which at least one of them was a Porpsicle there, which can then be played down, grab yourself an extra card, Card, a lot of draw, a lot of extra ink in the Sapphire Steel deck, which is always fun. But you're building up to that big end game here. You're trying to use cards like Lucky Dime, Tamatoa, Bell, Ariel, to have giant swing turns. You're behind by nine law, but you're trying to have turns where you get ten or more law in a turn. You're trying to have those big giant ends to the game. You just need to, you know, you're supposed to go behind. You're going to go behind most games. You're just trying to stick around long enough. Oh, oh there is another Tinkerbell coming down and that turns off the card draw from Beast Tragic Hero and it gets some damage down and it looks like we got a challenge with Tinkerbell so then we can put that extra two damage onto the Beast as well then a challenge with Mickey taking out the Ursula so it's just the Beast with two willpower remaining I think that's what you were saying that's the kind of thing which Fear Time could potentially do and that is what Fear Time's gone and done yeah, and Emerald Steel, of course, doesn't have access to a card like Be Prepared, which can reset this board. So Theo Time's feeling pretty comfortable just continuing to develop. And Julian with double uninkable Floodborne Flynn Rider in hand and Diablo. That is going to be cards which, if you want to play two, is going to cost you a minimum of seven ink. But Julian only has five available. So they're going to have to either play a Flynn Rider, which is questing for near nothing, because Theo Time has a bunch of cards in hand, or a Diablo. And it is the Diablo blow that they decide to go for but now the problem ross if they quest with beast one of the tinkerbells could challenge beast until two damage to diablo and this is theater time's game plan i love their decision in the previous turn ross to just even take that challenge with the mickey julian's getting pretty close to 20 so just keeping them as far away from 20 as possible while they just control the board as much as they can is a really really nice play from theater time yeah we see there's at least seven ink down there we know there's a tamatoa in hand for because that was in the opening 
hand after the mulligan from fear time so get a couple more ink down work towards those big turns and this is where you want to be grind your opponent's game down to a halt make them take a couple of turns doing very little while you build up that big end game and get that big win we see gaston yeah. coming down here i know this is a card you've been playing in some decks lately it's not one we see too often in these sapphire steel decks no it's it's a new introduction and it's one i really like gaston was a card in the second set which i always just loved the look of it but in sapphire these days you've got a lot of really good options as we see grab your swords being sung by tinkerbell to clear the board oh, 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 oh yeah Year time quest but this gaston is great at just keeping your hand with options available and i think in particular it's a really good option against ruby amethyst but yeah. you do see the aerial treasure collector often in this slot so gaston the preferred option instead well it lets you when you play look at the top three cards of your deck one goes in your hand rest goes to the bottom of your deck in any order i like they've called it developed brain little play <laughs> on the develop your brain uh, action card there but also quest for free so yeah. when for your time goes into that end game it's not the main card you're using but it's going to be a handy bonus now jack does come down and it looks like gaston is actually the target for that there because i mean but it's still four strength it's not a bad card yeah, absolutely. So the Gaston is not able to challenge, but it won't be able to quest. But Another there we go. Gaston. But again, and you're not drawing three here. You're only drawing one. But what's phenomenal here is you get the best card from the top three. In a game like Disney Lorcana, where you're not drawing many cards in a lot of decks, this gives you so much. Oh, and here we go. A long game Zeus takes out the jack. And now fear time. Okay, he's five Lord down. He is in complete control. Mickey comes down gets an extra ink and i'm not sure fear time even needs to get the big end game combo at this point there's so many characters on the board i think fear time can just quest can he win next turn yeah i think they must be able oh yeah to. there's 13 law on board there's 13 law i think just from the characters on the board two for each think about three for each gaston plus your mickey plus your havish and plus your other mickey and if we're into fear time's turn that's game right yeah you just quest do everything and win fear time really showing <laughs> the strength of sapphire still a little bit slow to get started but then using the control tools of steel to just really really wrap it up big win from fear time very nice indeed and that that's not how we generally see sapphire still winning we generally see control the board control the board control the board lucky dime tamato aerial bow these cards i keep mentioning having these big swing turns the your time didn't do that it just went look you've got no characters i have lots of characters it's kind of how we all played right at the beginning of set one when it was just i clear your board in quest of everything and win and that worked absolutely beautifully for the time there and i gotta tell Hell yeah, those gas stops have opened up potentially. Well, that is what I was actually going to ask you that question when you finished talking. I was going to say, well, we've seen Flynn Rider in Julian's deck. Does that mean we got Cursed Merfolk in there as well? They do come, as we mentioned, nicely as a pair. It's a good one drop option. It does mean no turn one Diablo if you play turn one Merfolk, which can be a bit of a pain. That's your general turn one with these Emerald Steel decks. But turns out we do see Cursed Merfolk, and I just, especially against aggressive decks where they're forced to discard their hand and then you got that early law and it was going very well for julian in that early game but then fear time managed to clear the board and basically do what julian was doing but better do you do that again in game two knowing it didn't work out in game one yeah that is that is a really good question i think julian has built their emerald steel deck in a slightly different way to what we're used to seeing with some more questing power going first is definitely a time where i mean julian got to 11 law before fear time could control the board so maybe julian can just get that little bit closer and if you can get a cursed merfolk down on turn one that is going to go a long way potentially we saw that ursula play as well discarding grab your swords from fear time before fear time could get to five ink that's going to be another play julian's going to be trying to pull off with this deck as well yeah, getting at Ursula, getting rid of cards like an Along Came Zeus, always fun. We've got two Diablo, we've got Cursed Merfolk. I'm slightly worried about the number of uninkables in mm. Julian's hand post post mulligan here looks like we do have an aladdin and it is going to be the cursed merfolk turn one as predicted with aladdin in the ink and now we're over to fear time top deck the tamatoa uh, a few turns away from that being relevant yet unless you choose to ink it 
Yeah, it was six cards, I believe, Julian Mulligan. I think only keeping this Curse Murpho because Thea Time plays the Popsicle, which is going to allow them to draw a card. Play passes back on over to Julian, who does draw an inkable card, which I think is going to be a pretty big relief. Yes. Yeah, that, yeah, I was going to say, that Jafar seems destined for the inkwell here. And then we see a Robin Hood coming down on turn two. Wondering if we might see the Curse Merfolk Flynn Rider combo here. Not to be yet. No Diablo, unfortunately. No one cost Diablo, at least. And yet, yeah, Julian is, you rightly spotted there, Ross, filled. Their hand is filled with uninkables. All four cards are uninkables. So the card off the top needs to be inked, and it is. Big moment. Julian could have had a nightmare situation if there was another uninkable off the top there. Well, I don't want to ink this Flynn Rider. I really want to play this Flynn Rider right now. But of course, Diablo is a free cost, also a good option. Quest for free, and of course, you keep on the curve. We need to mention, Fear Time played our old friend Mr. Smee. Card I'm very fond of. Quest for two, great stat line, but it does take a damage at the end of your turn unless you have a captain in play. Theatime time spends one on a Fortis Fu. We see a Chen Po enter their hand, which is not a card we see all that often in Sapphire Steel. Fortis Fear into the Inkwell, and it's going to be Baboom to remove the Diablo. A great option. We also saw Theatime playing Fire the Cannon. Steel just has a couple of ways of easy removing Diablo as the Smee is going to challenge the Merfolk, forcing Theatime to discard Tamatoa. How are you feeling about that, Ross, to see Tamatoa being discarded? I feel sad, but Tamatoa is often played as a four of. We're early in the game, so I can allow it. The one thing I, I do have to take umbrage with, your pronunciation of Baboom. Okay. Baboom! <laughs> is, of course, the correct pronunciation of that card, especially when it's taken out a big threat on your opponent's side of the board. Now, speaking of the opponent's side of the board, we do have that one cost Diablo finally coming down. It's not just the ability to shift into the free cost. It is a fact that you get to look at your opponent's hand, and information is crucial. We see Chenpo, Fishbone, Cogsworth. What was the fourth card there? It is. There's a Smee in there as well. Uh, the Smee must be the fourth card then. So, and that, that means I know what my opponent's got. There's no point using Ursula for a turn or two unless they've got a song I really want. Oh, they don't have an answer to this card. Now it's safer to play it. The information is huge. Of course, the more time goes by, the more your opponent draws, the worse your information is. But it's still a nice bonus for the time being. Here comes another Mr. Smee. Yeah, and Julian in this previous turn, playing this one cost Diablo, it was the only inkable in hand, so didn't actually ink last turn. So even though Thea Time has not played a card like Mickey Mouse or Fishbone Quill, and going second, they are slightly now ahead in ink. As we see Diablo shifting to discard the Zeus, and then it sings Let the Storm Rage On. That was the game plan for Julian, very well executed as another Diablo enters their hand. So Zeus was discarded, Diablo shifted for free, and then Storm Rage on was sung. So three inks still available for Julian and is going to spend it on another Diablo. Grab your swords is a big threat off the top, but it's not found. No, unfortunately not. So we... Oh, he's already there! Is the there... Grab Your Swords clears! That was top decked on the previous turn right after the Diablo was played, and that gets rid of the entire board. And if you're Julian, you're going, hang on a second, I looked at your hand a minute ago, yeah. you didn't have that! But unfortunately, it was literally top decked directly after the Diablo was played. That was the next card for your time top decked. Grab Your Swords gets rid of the entire board, and if you're behind on ink, you keep drawing on inkable, you had double Diablo and you lose them both. That's got to feel bad when you're already down by one game here. Yeah, and we see we don't talk about Bruno inked by Julian. And then both Robin Hoods played. So essentially, instead of playing five for this Robin Hood, paying four ink instead. But it did cost two cards from Julian's hand. Still only at four ink. And we're going to see the Popsicle heal. Mr. Smee, which is going to prevent the Robin Hood from removing it. Of course, Cogsworth on the board does mean that Smee has resist one. Diablo off the top is not a bad top deck, Ross. Drawn three of your Diablo. You can only play four. Three of them have already come out early. That is a big win. Now, Robin Hood, if you get rid of a character in a challenge, you do get some extra lore, which is lovely. If it gets banished, you get yourself an extra card. It's not enough on its own, but it's not a terrible start. Yeah, and I really love that Popsicle play by Theatime. Popsicle, we're used to seeing it being 
banished by Flavisham, but Theotime recognizing that that one heal could be huge. And Gaston again. Theotime with so few cards left in hand, but this Gaston is putting a big threat down on the board and just replacing itself with another big threat. Oh. The power of Gaston is really clear to see right now. Look at the free cards here and Flavisham, Lucky Dime, and Tinkerbell. And here's the thing with Gaston. Those cards go to the bottom of your deck, which means they're probably not coming back. And they are all cards you would actually want if you fear time. So you put a Lucky Dime on the bottom of your deck. Let's hope you don't desperately need one in a couple of turns, because now your chances of drawing Lucky Dime in the next few turns just went down quite high. Yeah, and Julian, with only four ink available, has drawn into a Tinkerbell. And it's going to cost six ink. And Julian's kind of decisions earlier in the game not to ink each time. They did, of course, have a very uninkable hand. But we saw at one point them playing that one cost Diablo instead of inking it. It's coming back to haunt them a little bit at this moment in time. Tinkerbell is going to remain in the hand for Julian. And Diablo is going to draw them a card. Yeah, the problem is, as it stands at the moment, if these players just keep questing, Julian's got free lore on the board from the characters. Fear Time has got six. So if Fear Time just keeps questing, he will catch and overtake Julian here. So it, at this point, the onus is on Julian. You can't just let Fear oh. Time do his thing. What have we seen? It's, it's Chen Po! Chen Po with Bodyguard is just a complete unit on the board. <laughs> and it is going to mean that if Julian wants to challenge any any character, Chenpo will have to be the target. Theater time also just considering if they spend one ink to give another character bodyguard with the fourth sphere. If there's two bodyguards on the board, Julian would have their choice of either to target. So I would be a bit surprised if Theater time does decide to go for it here, but they're certainly taking their time and they do go for it and they give Smee the bodyguard. And I love that, love that positioning. You don't have to do that, but you can see uh, Theater time with the Smee and the Chempo as the bodyguards and they both of course have resist one as well thanks to that Cogsworth and you'll notice fear time is jumping out ahead here already up by free ink has got game on the board but here's the thing fear times five ink away or five law away sorry Cogsworth and Gaston between them get five law so it seems like with those two bodyguards there, Fear Time's just going, look, I know I'm supposed to do these big endgame combos. You know, Ross keeps saying it up on the desk, but I don't need them. Not in this matchup, not right now. I didn't need it in game one. I don't need it here. You're not seeing Tamatoa. You're not seeing Lucky Dime. They're in my deck. They ain't coming out. These characters are going to quest me to victory. And along came Zeus. Is that being played here? Yeah, four ink was exerted. Of course, it could be sung by Robin Hood. Oh. But that five damage is going to be enough to remove Gaston. Even with the resist one, five damage was needed exactly. Still game on board. Now game is not on board, yeah, so fortunately. Diablo has and Robin Hood necessary to remove the Smee, again, because of that resist. So Robin Hood is going to gain two law for Julian. Lucky Dime is game here. Lucky okay. Dime would give game, not in the traditional way, but it would work. You copy Cogsworth, get that to law that would put you up to five fear time didn't take the lucky dime earlier had to take another card instead a top deck there would have done it instead we got a second cogsworth which still puts game on board for next turn and obviously fear time here only needs two law it's looking extremely good at this point what can Julian do here? You've got to do something. Your opponent is about to win the game. Yeah, and the uninkable curse Murphy means that Tinkerbell can't come through either. I don't think Tinkerbell would have saved them here. The ward of Cogsworth, so powerful. Fear time, the champion from Bochum, has started off Disney Lorcana Challenge Bologna with a 2-0 victory, getting those three points for each win and that precious bonus point for a total of seven points from round one. Yeah. We see the handshake there. Fear Time is your round one winner with a 2-0 victory. And like you said, very nice.